So what if NASA just stumbled upon a distant world with some really compelling signs of life? And what if those signs came with a very specific, very tantalizing number? Well, that's exactly the mystery we're going to break down today. 99.7%. That's the number. That's the statistical confidence level from the James Webb Space Telescope, the chance that it's detected something absolutely extraordinary in the atmosphere of an alien world. So, is this it? Is that the probability that we've actually found life? Well, the answer's a bit complicated, but the evidence, wow, it's some of the most compelling stuff we have ever seen. And it all centers on a planet 124 light years from here called K218b. So how in the world did we get to that number? This isn't just a guess, you know. This is the result of pointing our absolute best telescope at a tiny little dot of light and finding a chemical that, honestly, it just shouldn't be there. The chemical we're talking about is called dimethyl sulfide, or DMS for short. Now, here on our planet, this gas has a very, very specific origin story. It's pretty much only made by tiny living things like phytoplankton in our oceans. You know when you're by the sea and you smell that distinct ocean scent? You're actually smelling DMS. It is, quite literally, the smell of life. And here's the part that's just wild. The James Webb Telescope didn't just find a tiny whiff of DMS. The data suggests the concentration in K218b's atmosphere could be a thousand times higher than it is on Earth. A thousand times. That is a staggering amount. Okay, so why is this such a huge deal? Well, DMS is an incredibly fragile gas. Things like sunlight and oxygen just tear it apart in a matter of days. So for a telescope to spot it all the way from 124 light years away, it means something on that planet must be constantly, and I mean constantly, pumping it into the atmosphere. And here on our world, the only thing that does that is life. And look, this wasn't some lucky one-off observation that came out of nowhere. The excitement around K218b is the result of a decade-long investigation, with each new telescope adding another crucial piece to this incredible puzzle. The whole story kicks off back in 2015 when the Kepler telescope first found the planet. Then Spitzer confirmed it's in the habitable zone, you know, that sweet spot where liquid water could exist. In 2019, Hubble took a look and found actual water vapor. And then came the game changer, the James Webb Telescope. In 2023, it got that first tantalizing hint of DMS. And the plan now is to use an even more precise instrument to double check that signal. Every single stack has been leading us right to this moment. Okay, so we found a gas linked to the life on a world that has water. Time to pop the champagne and announce we found aliens, right? Whoa, not so fast. The whole scientific community is built on skepticism, and for a claim this extraordinary, you're going to need some truly extraordinary evidence. And this is where that high standard comes in. The current DMS detection is at what's called a three sigma confidence level. That's 99.7%. Sounds amazing, right? But for something that completely changes our understanding of the universe, like finding the Higgs boson, scientists demand five sigma. That's 99.99994% certainty. We're talking a less than one in a million chance of being a fluke. We're just not there yet with K218b. So right now, the debate is kind of split into two main camps. On one side, you've got Professor Niku Madhusudanan's team. They're the ones who made the discovery. They think K2018b is a Hycean world, which is basically a hot planet totally covered by a deep liquid water ocean. But on the other side, skeptics are saying it might be a mini Neptune, a small gas giant with a crushing atmosphere and no real surface, which would make life as we know it totally impossible. But the team that found the signal, they're confident. Professor Matasudin says he believes that with more observations, they'll be able to confirm whether this gas is really there with absolute certainty, and very soon. So yeah, the next couple of years are going to be absolutely critical. All right, so for a minute, let's just step into the optimistic camp. Let's have some fun. Let's assume the DMS is real and it is from life. What kind of completely bizarre creatures could possibly survive and maybe even thrive on a world like K218b? The conditions would be just extreme. The ocean could be 15 to 30 kilometers deep. That's pressure we can barely even comprehend. In that kind of crushing, eternal darkness, sight would be totally useless. Life might have to navigate using vibration, or even sensing magnetic fields. And just like in our own deep oceans, a lot of creatures would probably evolve to make their own light. But here's a weird twist. The planet's hydrogen atmosphere is less dense than ours, which could mean buoyancy allows creatures to grow to absolutely colossal sizes. So what would that even look like? 
Well, get this. Some scientists are speculating about creatures that look like super crabs. They'd need these incredibly powerful but flexible exoskeletons, maybe made of biopolymers, just to stop their insides from being instantly crushed. It is a wild, wild thought. But it's actually grounded in the physics of what that world might be like. As incredible and as mind-bending as K218b is, it's so important to remember it's just one planet in a cosmic zoo of bizarre and wonderful worlds. The universe is just so much weirder than we ever gave it credit for. I mean, take J1407b. We call it a Super Saturn. It's a gas giant with a ring system so enormous that if you swapped it with Saturn in our solar system, its rings would dominate our entire night sky. Or how about WASP-76b? It's a world so hot on one side that metals just vaporize into the air. Then, thousand-mile-per-hour winds whip them over to the cooler night side, where they condense and literally rain down as molten iron. Then you've got the diamond planet, PSR J1719 1438b. Scientists think it's the crushed crystalline carbon core of an ancient dead star. We're talking about a planet-sized diamond. And finally, there's Kepler 70b. It's the stripped-out core of another dead star, orbiting so close to its new sun that its surface temperature hits over 6,600 degrees Celsius. That is hotter than the surface of our own sun. So when you think about this cosmic menagerie, worlds made of diamond, planets where it rains iron, super Saturns, does the idea of a planet covered in a deep, living ocean really seem that strange after all? In a universe that's vast and this varied, what are the real odds that we're alone? 